Just better. You'll play tennis better. You'll run companies better. You'll be a better social media influencer. You'll be a better podcast host. It's, it's one of the main things that people forget about, that making yourself healthy makes them also more productive within the, the things that also matters, right? Because we can't, we can't diminish and say that money doesn't matter, money doesn't buy freedom. It definitely buys freedom for you. And what would you say is the difference between subcutaneous fat and visceral fat within your overall health? Yeah, really, really good question. So <clears throat> everybody lumps fat in the same category that it's bad, but um, they're blending in all these different fat depots and they just say it's bad. But there, there's a lack of fidelity. There's a lack of clarity. You need to look specifically <clears throat> at certain fats because they're way more bad than you think. I mean, they will kill you. And it's the fat around your heart. It's freaking stop what you're doing right now. Change your life today. Otherwise, you could be dead as early as tonight or tomorrow because you have a fatal heart attack. So we see threat mitigation very quickly as that fat goes down. People's, you don't have to wait for it to be gone to reduce your risk for a heart attack. That risk parabolically um, you know, happens, the, threat, the risk mitigation, as you even start eliminating this fat. And we'll see it gone, um, like this, this attorney, how quickly, just so you can see, in case people are wondering, well, God, I, you know, I'm a goner. It takes too long to get, you know, to get rid of this, uh, this fat, but it really doesn't. So I'll show you uh, how fast you can get rid of it. Just here's a guy with a big chunk of fat around his heart, right lung, left lung. This is his heart. So he eliminated all that fat in three and a half months. So you can very quickly eliminate uh, this fat. So the difference though, between visceral fat, heart fat, muscle fat uh, is like bricks and clouds difference to subcutaneous fat. But subcutaneous fat is actually two compartments, two compartments. So let's show you a, um, a picture of those two compartments so you can have a, an understanding uh, of those, those two compartments. So the, the two compartments are uh, this is subcutaneous fat here, but do you see this black line going right around there? Does it show up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So that black line is a membrane separating those two compartments. And when nature puts a membrane in, it's, it's not just like nature says, oh, what the heck, let's toss a, a fascial membrane in there. It's because it's got an important purpose. And that purpose is to separate and confine compartments. And so from this black line to this muscle here is actually called deep subcutaneous fat. And from this black line to the skin, it's called superficial subcutaneous fat. And those are bricks and clouds difference because the deep subcutaneous fat secretes all those inflammatory molecules that I talked about that gets secreted from visceral fat, heart fat, and muscle fat, all the tumor necrosis factor alpha, the interleukins, all the cytokines, the dipokines, um, chemical and biochemical uh, influential substances that get spewed out 24 hours a day, destroying your body. And let me just talk to the girls, making you ugly. Does that get your attention, ladies? This is why your face goes from looking pretty when you're 16 to looking like you don't want to look when you're 50. But you can reverse this. So when you increase this, this fat here, it will make you prettier, more attractive. Guys, it will make your face more handsome. This superficial subcutaneous fat has a molecule that gets secreted by it instead of the disease-causing ones called adiponectin. Adiponectin. And adiponectin protects you from heart attacks and strokes, cancer, neurodegenerative conditions. So you want more of the superficial fat and you want less 
of the inflammatory, you want less, you want none of it. I mean, it's disease. People say, well, how much visceral fat do I want to have? That's sort of, a, I turn around and say, well, how much cancer would you like to have? I mean, the reality is visceral fat kills more human beings than cancer. It does. It kills more people than cancer. Go into AI and says, what, how many deaths is visceral fat responsible for? And then how many deaths is cancer responsible for? And it's, it's a, there's an enormous disparity between the amounts of death that happens from visceral fat because it causes so many forms of chronic disease. But cancer just causes cancer. It just causes you know, people to die from cancer rather than uh, dropping dead of a heart attack. But visceral fat causes strokes, heart attacks, cancer, Parkinson's, MS, uh, uh, gastric carcinomas, uh, Barrett's esophagus, all these other fatal conditions because it's this furnace of inflammation causing disease in all these different forms. So you want to use superficial subcutaneous fat as yet another biomarker for your health, but not to get rid of it, but to increase it. When I took off my shirt, and I'll do it again, one thing you should notice is I don't visibly have a six pack. I got a layer of fat there. Do you see that? And I'm happy about it. I want it. I know all the gym bros and those CrossFit gals walking around wanting their six pack. Yeah. Ladies in CrossFit want six pack to be like the dudes. Well, when women get that six pack and they have to lose their adiponectin. And ladies, you can get that six pack and look like that dudes, but you're going to get something else. I'm going to tell you what it is. You ready for this? Just science. You're going to get a dude face. So that's your choice. Do you want to look like a man? You're going to look like a man in your face. You don't get to keep the pretty, you know, Max Al, you know, pretty attractive lady look by getting rid of your superficial subcutaneous fat. That song from 20 years ago, I cannot tell a lie. I like big books. It's because the fertility of that superficial subcutaneous fat that goes around those, those fertile figures and layers, those big butts and that fertile look, and we're not talking the gigantic, huge disease ones. We're talking the ones that that dude, I don't know who he was, sing about that song, they had a layer also of that superficial subcutaneous fat. So you want to have a six pack, but you only want to see it on an MRI, not on your body. So nobody had six packs in our existence and it wasn't even something thought of until uh, the 1900s. Like, you know, the bodybuilders started making it, you know, kind of a popular thing. But today, we, you know, bodybuilders are purposely trying to get rid of their superficial subcutaneous fat. And they're walking around trying to show their, their massive veins and their, their arteries and all this, you know, definition, stuff like that. And I like to go up to, man, that is, wow, do you have such low levels of fat? You know who also I see has low levels of fat? 90-year-old women. Elderly because it's disease, you want it. You know who has high levels of subcutaneous fat? Kids, babies, because they haven't developed all that visceral fat. They haven't lived incorrectly and lost that beautiful subcutaneous fat. So yeah, you're, you're wise to ask about that superficial subcutaneous fat. You wanna promote, we wanna promote awareness of it to people so they get more of this stuff and eliminate this, eliminate this, eliminate this, and eliminate heart fat. That makes total sense, Dr. Sean Amara. And talking about fertility, as you were talking about, uh, women normally store omega-3, especially EPA, DHA, in 
their fat stores, superficial fat stores within the glutes, within the legs, especially to take care of the baby, to make him develop. But then you have that culture to lose that entire uh, superficial fat, which is healthy fat. And as you can see, a lot of women are having fertile fertile problems. They're not being fertile. They're not yeah, being able to have kids. Yeah, huge problem. And a lot of women have written me, you know, they um, they purpose to lose their their subcutaneous fat because of the cultural expectation uh, pressure they feel. This goes on in the um, the CrossFit community, these gym communities. And um, uh, and then they, they've even succumbed to have liposuction. And they get they get this dramatic reduction in their superficial subcutaneous fat in the course of a two hour procedure, and then they notice subsequently that their faces became less attractive. Can you imagine having a surgical procedure to try to make your abdomen look more attractive, and it destroys the appearance of your face? And these women write me that they regret it was the biggest, you know, regrettable decision they did in their life having liposuction. So, ladies. If you're thinking about liposuction, absolute insanity. Get rid of the fat that kills you. No fat, no heart fat, no heart attack. Get rid of that fat, not what some doctor is going to try to sell to you um, that, that is, you know, some surgical procedure that's dangerous in and of itself. And they don't even tell you about the side effects like this will make your face less attractive. Holy cow. 